In this video, we're going to explore the compile and link functions in Angular directives. They're quite misunderstood and infrequently used. However, they have brilliant capabilities when we actually start manipulating the DOM, so it's important to understand the life cycle of each function. Here we've got a simple error box that allows us to change the class based on the type of error. This is the generic box with a warning class, and this is the error box with an invalid class. So we have different types of styles, but we have the base class which gives us the padding, the border and the rounded corners. Let's see how we do this in the link function. Then we'll learn about the link function and the compile function a bit more in depth. This is how we're generating the errors. We just have a controller called error controller and then we have a list. Inside the list is just an array of objects with a particular message. You could imagine that this could be sent back from an API or it could be part of a hard coded message for your application. So here are the types, error, warning, and invalid. All I'm doing in this demo is simply doing an ng repeat over the errors.list, and I'm binding our error message to the particular div that we're repeating, and then I'm passing in the type as an interpolated string. So this will actually give us the values in the controller, such as warning and invalid. Then we're gonna print out the message. This is completely dynamic. So we add our base error class, which if we look in the HTML, gives us the border, the padding, the margins, and the border radius. This acts as like kind of a base class. Then we have two different types of classes, the warning and invalid one. These both change the border colors. We're then using the attributes object and we're looking at the type property because that's what we pass into the HTML down here. So we can access the attributes on the particular directive itself. This will then grab the interpolated value such as warning or invalid. Inside the link function, we then add that attribute to the error hyphen hyphen. So it actually creates our class dynamically for us for each type of error message. Now you notice I put a little note here that these are called twice. This is because the link function does everything after the element has been compiled. So I'm going to remove everything in here and we'll actually look at the life cycle of these and how the order of the execution works. Now you might have heard of the compile function. So let's actually change the link function to compile. Now it's important to remember that compile doesn't have a scope instance yet because it's actually before the element has been bound to the scope. So we can just keep element and then the attributes. Any logic that we place here will actually be printed out for the base template. Now this might be unfamiliar. What it essentially means is any manipulation we do here to the particular template is only ran once. What we can then do is actually return the link function. Now with the link function, it's important to remember that we actually have two link functions. Now this might sound strange at first. Angular lets us access the pre and the post link. Inside the pre function, we have access to the template. However, we don't have access to the children because they might not have been compiled yet. In the post link function, we do have access to the children. Let's add some notes here just to clarify that. So we have access to the child elements that are linked. And then above in the pre link function, we have access to the child elements that are not linked. This means that they haven't been compiled and Angular hasn't registered them just yet. In the compile function, nothing has been linked. So we'll add a comment saying raw template. Beforehand, we were actually doing element and then add class and we were adding a class of error. Now we were actually doing this in the link function, which isn't a great idea because we can do it in the compile function, which actually accesses the raw template. This means that instead of adding the class every single time in the link function, we add it once for the raw template before it's actually compiled. This means that if we actually look at the template, it will always have a class of error and we only add the class once. In the post link function, we can then add the dynamic class and we can then add the dollar attributes and then the type property back. Now, because the post link function is exactly the same as the link function, we need to inject scope element and then attributes again. Now everything will work. So these function arguments correspond to the scope of this function. Any function arguments here, which are identical to here. So we'll add these in just for clarity. And that's about it. We have a compile function, which accepts element and attributes. And then we can return pre and post. There's actually one more syntax that we can use and we can return a function. All this function is, is the post link function. So we can actually get rid of these if we didn't want them. In this case, we don't actually want to do any logic inside pre. So let's copy this, put it inside the postlink function, 
and we can just comment out our return block, which returns the pre and the post functions. Just to clarify, if you're still unsure about what this return function does, it's essentially link and then function. We could add the name post link just for clarity. So there are two different ways that we can do this, and you can't use compile and a link function, you have to use compile and then return the link function. If we were to add link back, it would actually no longer work, so keep that in mind when you're building with compile and link. The final thing we need to do is add these attributes back in so we can have the attributes and then attributes.type. Let's have a look at how these work in the browser. Now when we refresh, we see blue, red and then green. This works as expected. When we looked at this at the beginning of the video, we actually had a comment in the code that said this is called twice. So let's actually set up some console logs and show this working. We can add a console log and we can say one. In the post link function, we can add another console log and in this one we can say two. So because we have three error messages, we should see two being called three times and then the compile will only call log once. So what we should see is one, two, two, two. When we open up Chrome DevTools, we can see exactly this. We can see one and then two and it's been called three times, which is the three inside the circle. So we're actually optimizing Angular at this point. We can use the compile function to mutate the template before we actually link to it. So the flow of this is Angular will grab our template, we can then manipulate it in the compile function where we add the error class, which we can actually check is present on all of these. So here we have error as a painted style with a border, and here we have error as well, and error as well. And you can see that these special classes, which are modifier classes, have overwritten the border color specified in the error. So we treat error as a base class, and then we essentially inherit and override things that we don't want to use. So now you know how to use the compile and the link function more effectively and understand the different ways that we can use it.